Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. How you doing? Nice, nice to see you on for us a Thursday morning. It's in, actually Friday. Oh my gosh. So anyway, the, <laughs> welcome to the Holderness family. We never found a name for this, but it's recap, over now. So amazing race special recap season thirty three podcast legs ten and eleven. Yes. Yeah, so leg ten in the finale, we are going to cover what happened in those final legs, including yeah. some conversations we've had we've had with some friends. Tell you some of the stuff you didn't see behind the scenes. Um, if you noticed, speaking of behind the scenes, we are in a hotel room night right now. We had the honor and privilege of watching these two legs with most of the cast of season 33. Yeah, we had a, a bunch of them come here to Fort Lauderdale. Thanks to Lulu and Lala, the twins, yes. if you remember them. They set up this terrific event for us. And then uh, they also made it so that we could have a safe place to watch the finale with our like close family and friends. And for us, we brought our children, of course. And we'll show you kind of a little bit of an interaction that we had with them. They're home now, by the way. We're not like they're not in the closet no. back there or anything. Uh, and then also a lot of the members of the team uh, for the company that we own who like kept our company going while we were gone for two months and were really as big a reason why we finished where we did on the race. So, um, And it was so fun meeting everybody else brought their family too. And we got to meet everybody else's family and friends and support system. And if you hear our voices, yeah. they're a little raspy because we've had a lot of fun. And the reason why right. we're recording this a day late is because we – we really enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> we did. Well, we enjoyed ourselves. And then um, then we ha- we did do uh, several interviews yesterday. But then most of our voice uh, losing was the fact that Kim and Kayla, you know, from the race. Um, and Lulu Lala. And, but yeah, but mostly them. They decided in the middle of a dinner we were having that we needed to go to a dive karaoke bar. So good. Um, and it was the best decision anyone has ever made in their entire lives. Yes. But no one can talk today. Um, nobody can talk today. <laughs> but that was good times. Um, I love these people. And it was so fun. But we are all so crazy and competitive. So should we get to it? Yeah, let's get to it. And we're going to try to do this as quickly as we can without missing too much. We've got two hours to cover of television and it was incredibly exciting. And you'll note there were quite a few lead changes. They did not have to create drama. You guys have seen it before. You big race fans, you've seen they will sometimes create drama um, when something is make it look is, closer than yeah, it actually is was. Very one sided. They did not need to create any drama. This it year. was it was really that close, yep. you guys. So let's get started. Um, we're starting leg ten, the final four in Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. Um, we always talk about this pre race mood. I don't want to get too much into this because I am feeling great right now. And sometimes when I talk about. Uh, you know, panic attacks, then it kind of triggers some stuff, but we should talk about this one though. Cause this was, we, we've talked about your anxiety issues over the course of the race. And this is over the course of two years, right? Cause she, we had some anxiety when, when COVID was coming to us, right? That was, I think everyone was having that of those 50 or so days that we spent um, on this race. This was the worst day. He's saying 50 total. Cause yeah. we were gone for two. Tw- no, anyway. Right. Yeah. Between the first leg and the second, like this was the one, this was the big one. So we had been gone for like 23 days at this point. I was or 22 days. I was desperately missing my kids and we were doing, and to watch it, you're like, you guys are doing great. We were doing really, really well. So I had nothing to do with our performance in this at all. I just, we were in this tiny hotel room getting ready. You know, it was, we flew in, we got our COVID test and we were going to go race the next yeah. morning. It was a um, nice, clean, safe hotel, but it was, yeah. it was smaller and it had a dark hallway. Yeah, it was just really dark. And, yeah. and I'm just, I, I, that nothing to do with anything. I had a panic attack and it was, yeah. it was so bad. You know, we were on, so this is going to sound like I was doing something dangerous, but I wasn't because we were on like a first floor. I was trying to crack the window and they wouldn't open all the way. Like I was trying to crawl out the window. You had climbed onto a ledge. Um, and the just ledge, to get air. Right, just to get air. And it was one of those windows that just barely bent open on the top. And she, um, I, I knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. I was, I, we, the only way that we get exercise on these days off is just to exercise in our room. And so I was, Kim has like, uh, it was an auditory trigger. I was working out and I was breathing heavy. And she was like, I can't, you know, like, you have to stop. I and can't take this breathing. So I stopped. Anxiety knows where to find you no matter where you are it's not necessarily when the cameras are rolling during the race where you have to jump off a bridge or where they have created this like really crazy course i think that you you, like for people who struggle with this it happens in the down times before and sometimes even after right i'll just say this i had asked basically the producers if i could leave i asked if i could go home i was like i'm done i can't do this like i could not imagine 
running or navigating or doing anything that's required of you. And I, I, I just felt like I'm like, this isn't fair to the other people because I'm, you know, and I, you're just not, I, I wasn't even thinking straight. So, you know, you are kind of confined to your hotel room because of COVID, but also safety reasons. They let me go outside. I kind of sat in an alley, which was perfect. I calmed up for like an hour. I just sat outside and I made the decision with Penn, like, no, I need to stick. I need to see it through with zero expectations. I'm like, let's just get this over with. I don't even care right now. I just get, get me out of here, which is the worst, worst way to start something. Like it is the and like, it is not a great mental space to start a race uh, in which you there's four people and no room for error. So Raquel and Kayla take off, and I, we were standing there with Rune and Natalia. We rip the clue, and you see me. I'm I am running. I'm I'm, I'm not fast, but like I'm far. Behind. I'm like I'm like I every single step felt like such effort. And we get in the car. I'm like. Okay, did that part. Now, okay, next part. And then I opened the map, and I saw the city we needed to go to, which was a bit of a drive. It was. Didn't you feel like a little bit of relief once you ripped the clue? I even feel that way as somebody who just like deals with the anticipation in between these legs and with like knowing that this was going to be, and we talked about it, this like anxiety or no anxiety, this is the biggest day. Mm-hmm. This is the day that you get to the final three. Um, it's it's the it's the day you don't want to lose because if you get through this day, you are going to touch that mat and whatever the final location is, and you won't be eliminated. You'll finish somewhere in the top three. So, um, I mean, I felt some relief. It was a bit of a drive. Uh, it was into a town called Setubal, and I've, if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I apologize to the wonderful Portuguese people, uh, Portuguese speaking people who live in. Um, the Lisbon area, but we got there um, after asking like a few directions pretty efficiently. And we did. It's so funny. There's going to be a theme developing here. We leave a place with Raquel and Kayla in the lead and somewhere in transportation, we end up getting to the next place ahead of them. So, so I that, spotted no. Setable on the map. And so you, you hear him say like, should we just go for it? So I'm like, let's just get to the town and then we'll ask for directions. And so we, we really only we stopped kind of at a gas station real quick. You know, they pointed, so we got there first. We didn't know they were first because it wasn't a traditional clue box. So we, this was all we we go up this gorgeous tower, and it said this was our first vision test of the day. We had to find that first clue. Yeah, this one was. In, uh, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk more about vision tests in a second. By the way, while we're talking about mental health. Um, I am ADHD squirreling right now. Do you see that that dot right over my head? Does anyone else have this affliction where they've been staring at that dot? Do you want to? Do you think you could just turn off that lamp right there? And I bet you that'll fix it. Like, let's see. Let's see if this works. Ready? Ah! <laughs> there we go. Okay. Sorry. So we were talking about uh, finding the flag. All right. We're gonna tell you for real if something is easy or something is hard in this podcast. Yeah. We have done that before. This was a big flag. I'm colorblind that I saw this flag. It yeah. took 15 to 20 seconds. I, so it, it, it took us like, it, we, he found it really quick. Again, he's colorblind. Or I think you hear Natalia say in the, in the, um, in the show, it, from standing up there, it's easy to find. On the ground, that was a little tricky. Right. So the challenge was actually not finding the flag up there. It was, they didn't give you any directions. You just see the flag and you've got to find a way to get there. Kim had great advice. She said, follow this, the coastline and you'll get there. Well, follow the coastline, but if you go to the yellow buildings. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. I was like, it's on this side of the white buildings. Go to the yellow buildings. So for us, we found it very easily. But you see how it's pretty tricky. And there, are, there were, it was all one way road. So yeah. Ryan and Dusty passed it. So they couldn't really do it. They had to go several blocks to make a U-turn. So that was an right. issue. Uh, Ryan and Dusty actually made up a ton of ground, ton of time. but in doing so like the, the colorful language of Dusty rears oh its head once again. Uh, oh, and so like, what were some of the things he, he says, said? He called, he called all of us lambs. Yes. He's like, we're lions and we're going to pick off these lambs. And no. he referred to us as not a lamb, but a cake buffalo. So they caught up to Raquel and Kayla and now to the cake buffalo. And so I was like, what's a cake buffalo? So Maybe it's like a big. It. And so we Googled it and it was just shaped like buffaloes, like in birthday cakes. I don't think that's. I, Are we saying it wrong? No, I, I looked up K- K-A-Y-K. I looked at K buffalo. I looked a keg buffalo. I didn't know what he was saying. I think Dusty was just imagining like a birthday cake and a prize. And then he mixed it in his brain with something that he would want to shoot and eat in the Serengeti, which is a buffalo. So that would like maybe cake is like a prize 
person. I, I know. We've, we should have asked him. So I have to say. Uh, no, I did ask him. He's on, he's on the plane. I'm like waiting for him to text me oh. back. If he does text me back, we'll let you know what a cake buffalo is. I have to say in watching um, The Amazing Race with a group, a huge group of people, I was actually very worried because I don't. Uh, we, we don't really we never had watch parties or anything we're just kind of watching it by ourselves the whole time i don't like it when uh, uh, yeah so I, I was nervous about watching with the group it was so much fun it was so much fun because yeah. it was like a sporting event because anytime anybody did anything well or was like crap talking the other it was like it was like it was like at a sporting event and dusty he's right in front of us he was right and my son was so obsessed with him so every time dusty stood up and was like Woo! It, dusty was like a professional wrestler on wednesday night I oh mean, my god he was, like, he was he was dusty <laughs> kept the energy up. Okay. There were a lot of winding roads, um, but we got we got ahead of Raquel and Kayla. And, and they it still had to park, and they still had to climb their way to the top. So we had probably a seven or eight minute lead there. Um, and then we get to, we find it, we get to the first clue, and it's a roadblock. We were told there'd be two roadblocks today. We had a little bit of a lead. I, I explained my mood. I felt like I should do it first. I should do the first roadblock to get that out of the way. I, for me, yeah. the roadblocks are very nerve wracking. It ended up being a good decision. If you've been listening to this, you know how I've studied the race. Um, even before being cast on the show, we've watched every season. You know, when we were signed up, I mean, we had, we have Google Docs. We have, so at, on my couch, what I would have done is rip open the clue, see how I had to, you know, identify the, it was, I think there was probably 12 boats, eight to 12 boats. Mm-hmm. And then four were Portuguese explorers and four were just Portuguese, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know. One of them was Cristiano Ronaldo. Just people from Portugal. <laughs> and so, right. um, but they were all names that you kind of, you would have recognized. Um, they were also the Portuguese spelling of the names, not the American. That's spelling important. Okay. So they yeah. were the Portuguese spelling, right. which is very different. So we were in this kind of marina area and you know we're in, there's cameras around it's an amazing race that draws attention so there were probably seven or eight people just like milling around like what are you crazy americans doing as a sane just clear thinking individual i would have gotten the clue run over because he can't help me in a roadblock i have to do it myself i would have run over to one of the, like the fishermen standing there and asked point point to the one that's a portuguese explorer because you can do that and got it in the boat. Race brain, anxi- go, 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 anxiety go. brain, yeah. and my anxiety brain, which is like, let's just freaking do this. Um, so I run down the dock and you hear me going like, I'm doing this wrong. Like I, I even, even knew, I was saying it out loud, like this is not the best way to do it. But anxiety brain was like, I don't even care. So I jumped in and I took it. It was just really in a great, amazing race strategy. You just jump in the prettiest one. Not a good strategy. Right. Well, hang on. So I, I know you said you don't think it was a good strategy. And when we left, you were, um, you were kind of like dogging on yourself. Right? I just guessed for like the prettiest boat. I didn't, you know, didn't know what I was doing. I do think that the amazing race likes things to be pretty. <laughs> and so maybe like I thought maybe just there was the three prettiest boats were the ones that you had to pick or the four prettiest boats. As it turned out, that was not the case. It's not a good strategy. See, it's not a good strategy. You see uh, Ryan rowing a boat that was the same paint scheme as yeah, yours. And it was wrong. It was the wrong one. So but for, until I saw that, I thought my wife was a genius. <laughs> and she had figured out, oh. Your wife's an idiot. Can, can I be honest? Like we think like producers a lot in this show. Sometimes it, it some, hurts us. It, it hurt us during that uh that mail uh, it hurt us during the rock challenge it hurt us during the mail thing but we um we think like if we see cameras somewhere that's where we think yeah, it's gonna be go to if you know if there's someone who looks like an actor that's probably who the person's gonna be just because we'd watch shows and seen how that happens we study the race we produce we know what it takes to put on a show but they find ways to mess with you. I really bad strategy. Yeah, I, I I hope we get a chance at some point to talk to the producers on the Amazing Race and find out how many different ways they can bleep with us during a day because they're quite good at it and it does make for entertainment. It, anyway, it, it was one of those things where I got in the boat and I knew I w- I backed out right. I'm like, oh, I know I'm facing the wrong way. They didn't show me. I actually rode very quickly. And even Arun said, Arun told me later, he's like, I knew we were screwed. I saw how fast you were rowing. I actually did row the boat very well, quickly. Well, I mean, compared to Arun. Arun, oh, Arun. I love that guy. I, I love him. He has definitely never rowed a boat before. Well, and, and, and it's it's okay. We'll talk about that yeah, in a second. And I, so I've never rowed a rowboat like that. Yeah. I've done a canoe and a kayak, but I've never done a rowboat like that. So 
you hear me saying, I'm like, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. Yeah. And then there, the guys on the shore were laughing. And I'm like, crap. I think they were laughing because you were just, you were hazing yourself. I was like, actively. I'm like, I yeah. suck at this. You know what's funny? You were, okay, so you get there. You have no idea if you're going to get it right. I was like, hey, sir. They, they give you the clue. At that time, I had been standing there watching you for 18 seconds. Let me yeah. tell you why. You went to the bathroom. You, yeah, you said you're going to do the roadblock, and there was like, uh, there was a bathroom. There's never a, just a bathroom anywhere. And I'm like, this is going to take at least 90 seconds, right? So I go in the bathroom. I take the time to wash my hands. I walk. I don't run. I'm back five minutes later, and Kim is rowing up to the freaking dock. Yeah. She did this so fast. I did, I, I, it was yeah. definitely less than five minutes. But the t- I barely got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, because, and, you, and, the, and the distance you had to row, it wasn't nothing, but it wasn't super far. Yeah. And it was like, it was the, you know, pier number 10. Um, and I was like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> As if I could like flirt my way through it. He gives the clue. And I said, I'm like, we just used all of our amazing race luck for the day. Like we've, we've used it all. That Which is it. You're about to find out. Is it's true. true. So, yeah. Uh, and so um, we get the clue. So here's the deal. That was Magellan. It was the Portuguese. That was, it was how, and, and how you, how Magellan is spelled his name in Portuguese. Right. And so I, um, so I was, but I didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, I paid attention in school, but we learned about Magellan. Not, you didn't know that was Magellan. I didn't it, know It that. was just a bunch so of different So I will words. say, yeah. I will, I will say as much as I was like, I'm an idiot. I just guessed. I, this is 100% honest because I'd been navigating there and I was looking at the little street. I had seen that name on a street. So I had seen Ferdinand Magellan, but like I'd seen that spelling of a name on a street. So that is why I got into the boat. I saw it. I'm like, Ooh, that's a name I just saw. So yeah. it wasn't like I completely guessed, but here's the thing. I'm like, I didn't recognize most of the names. I didn't look in one other boat. I did not. Cause you see Raquel going to, she was like looking yeah, at there's like, Ronaldo. She, there's, it is hard to look. You had to walk all the way to the back of the boat the and look around. Yeah. I, so I, I got in, looked at name. I'm like, I recognize that name. Peace. Anyway, we got yeah. super lucky. Um, and, yeah. I'm, I'm like, let's 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 skip ahead to the next route info. Yes. Yeah, right? so which we, was a team challenge. A route info was when you do something together and there's a challenge where you're both working on it. Um, we were painting under pressure. Yeah. So, sardine cans onto a door. Yeah. So we had to find this cute little market area that was adorable. Mm-hmm. We picked up a can and we literally, we were like, what is the easiest one? And again, race brain plus anxiety brain. We picked what probably the most intricate one. I, there were four or five of them. And they were all pretty equal until, I, I, man, we were looking at the race the other night. And the one that Kayla and Raquel picked, they picked the right one. Oh, 100%. It was just a few colors. Um, and there were straight lines. And there were straight lines. And there were, like all of our lines were squiggly. And um, the, re- the biggest reason we picked the wrong one, if you look at the show, it said Our Lady of the Sea on the can. It was written in cursive. We can write in cursive. No problem. There was intricate black shadowing behind the words. Now, when we got to the door, it was basically a paint by numbers, you know, like fill in the blanks. You could see they had an outline of pink. That means that's where you're supposed to paint Mm -hmm. pink. They had an outline of white. That's where you're supposed to paint white. The actual ocean, the sea, the blue, the background was already painted. So we don't have to paint the background. But because the intricate shadowing was so small, it wasn't, it wasn't really a full shape. It was just a line. And we didn't know that we had to paint over it because right. it was so small. And that included particularly the parts inside the letters. They weren't circled or marked for us in any way. Yes. Yeah, so it was paint by numbers until yeah. it wasn't. Right. And so that's when we needed to look at the can. And I will say watching it, I'm like, Oh, that's so obvious. But when you're yeah. in it and you're this close from it and your hands are shaking it seemed really daunting. So we got there. Uh, I'm trying to remember the times best. And I and I do write these things down. I didn't bring my full notebook here. Mm-hmm. I think we probably got there 10 minutes, 15 before Raquel I, and Kayla. I, I think it was closer to 10. I think. Like, yeah, was, they got yeah. there not long after yeah. us. Um, you know, and they're so good. And they, I think theirs was, they were so smart to take a beat and look at the, I thought we had done the same thing, quite honestly, but we're idiots. Um, <laughs> we're not idiots. We, we picked a tough one. Um, we got like, this was one of those, you know, challenges where Kim and I just gutted it out. Um, I will say the doorknob on ours 
had a line through it. So right. we knew to put purple on the doorknob. Yep. And you see Ryan and Dusty. If we had picked that can. We may have been still I don't know that it. I don't no. know that we would have known to paint a freaking doorknob. Maybe, no, maybe. Like, I think we would have asked about it after a while. That, I mean, but they're, they're not going to tell you. Their doorknob was in the middle of their door. So the doorknob so, was in the middle of the door. And it just had that black over that whole section. Yeah. I ours had a very clear line down our door top, doorknob, so we knew to paint part of it. That's and that made it easier for us. I think after one or two tries, like you and I, we got to a point where we were really trying to to, to figure stuff out, um, and we were they didn't show a lot of it. We we did a lot of like detail fill ins when it turned out that's not what we needed. We yeah. we just needed to fill in the black stuff in the middle of the letters. Um, I, I stand by the fact that I would not have <coughs> painted somebody's door because that was a beautiful alleyway with this beautiful music. I would have painted the doorknob. I would not have. That's a gorgeous door. I would not have ruined the doorknob. We'd already ruined the door. That's true. But they could. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. That, um, they, they probably got that doorknob at whatever the Portuguese version of Home Depot is. <laughs> it's. <laughs> they're not going to let crazy. They're not going to let us mess with a valuable door. Yeah. That's true. So Raquel and Kayla get theirs. They leave. I think probably. Ten minutes later, we got ours. Yep. We got our clue. Um, and we were, this day was all about just making, we of course wanted to win. Yeah. Of course wanted to win, but it was all about finding the time. Don't lose. Don't lose. 75% chance. You guys have heard me talk about math this entire time if you've been listening. Every day, I wake up and I think, what is what are the statistical chances that an average performance will advance us to the next round? In the first leg, it's 91%. In the second leg, it's 90%. In the third leg, it's 89%. It's always incredibly high numbers. And if you just perform average, you have a great chance of making it through. So this leg, it's 75%. Getting a little tighter, but still, that's yeah. a three out of four chance. That if you perform average and don't screw up, you're going to make it to the next round. So we were aiming, this is the day that I was like, let's aim for average, but because I, we were really good at the navigation part. So Raquel and Kayla lose their map. And I think there's some stuff online like, why don't you go back for it? I talked to her. She's like, the definition of lost is they didn't know where they left it. So they didn't know if they left it at the pier. They didn't know if they left it out at the door. They didn't, and, and it's, again, it's a little bit of a run. So I, I think they did the wise thing is they stopped to buy one. Um, I think they had to stop two places to, before they found and, one. And by the way, you could not have gotten there without a map. No. I, so it was a bit of a drive. And again, yeah. I think we should have Google searched this, but our brains are fuzzy. It was it was a decent drive, maybe an hour. Everything felt like at least an hour. Anytime we went from one place to the next. Okay. And the Amazing Race made that decision to do this on this um, particular season to find more remote places, which by the way, such a win for us. Like such yeah, beautiful, beautiful remote spots. Well, so again, this is another one of those... Uh, times where I, I took a beat. We weren't great at taking a beat off and found it was the the name of the city <clears throat> and the lighthouse. It was a, it was a whole map. It was an, a map of the entire side of Portugal. So yeah. it was not a detailed map, but on the teeny tiny, you see, Cicambre. you see Cicambre. I was like, well, let's just try that. And I, so our, our strategy was like, let's, especially on a long drive. Let's get to the city and then ask the direction. We didn't even have to do we that. We didn't have to even we didn't even have to ask for directions because it was it's a tourist it's area. It's a landmark. It's a landmark. So we got there we got there without any struggle and then I just assumed Raquel and Kayla would be there, but we count the clues in the clue box and I'm like, dude, we're first. If you're keeping track at home, Raquel and Kayla start in the lead. We pass Raquel and Kayla on the way to the first clue box. And stayed at the lead uh, after the first roadblock. Raquel and Kayla pass us at the first challenge. We pass Raquel and Kayla en route. We kept passing Raquel and Kayla en route, and they kept passing us during the challenges. You know. So here we are with the lead, and I'm like, okay, let's just buck this trend. I don't want Raquel, <laughs> Raquel and Kayla to pass us again in the challenge. We find out what the challenge is, and we're screwed. The final roadblock is a vision test. Well, it, it was, <laughs> thank you for saying that. It was You had to count these columns at a monastery. Yeah, so we just for people maybe who haven't seen it, so this beautiful uh, church, cathedral, and there's it's just this endless, on both sides, these gorgeous arches. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, again, on TV, you're like, oh, that's fine. They're in real life. It's shadowy on one side. It's light on the other. That yeah. shadowy side, you even, everybody, except for Kayla, struggled with this because yeah. it was really hard to see. I, by the way, um, cameras have zoom lenses. Eyes do so not. So if you watch this from your couch and you're like, oh, I can see the end of that. Cameras have zoom lenses. <laughs> I, I, I was getting so mad looking at it because it shows me going like, 
I'm like laying down on my stomach. And he was like in the sniper position. Well, I was trying to find a way to keep my like my head still. I I can't, must have countered it. 20 times and never came up with the same answer because the last 20 columns on each side was straight up guessing. Also, they were different lengths, the two sides of the monastery. Yeah, so one side was slightly longer because I was like, why are you guessing odd numbers? And That's why. There was that, that's why because the right side I think was a little longer. But then, um, so I will say that this is one of the many times where we felt our age because I was, you see me cause I'm always taking notes and, and I was like, I was actually sitting there drawing pictures of, I'll find the picture, but I was like, I, we have collectively as a family, the worst vision. I have worse vision than he does. One of my great fears was that we were going to have to do that clue looking thing. I think it was at the season. What finale was it where you, they had to jump out of, they had to spot a clue from the helicopter and, and jump. Oh, um, uh, well, they've, they've had several of well, those. But, but we, at night. So my, yeah. my fear was we'd have to do a night leg. And we'd already done a night leg in London, but one where we'd have to see far away at night. I have astigmatism so bad, I can't see anything. If We would still be in Portugal if I had to do this challenge. So you hear Penn say, I'm just going to turn this into a running challenge. It was a quarter mile there to guess and a quarter mile back. So it's a half mile every time you have to guess. And he, he guessed eight times. Eight times. And I, each time I went up from I, I went what I thought was the best guess, which for me was 110. I went up, down, up, down, up, down. And so I got to 106 on the eighth try. And so that's four miles because it was 400 yards to get to the monk and back. And this was um, my picture that I was, I'm the worst artist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're going to talk more about this in a bit. Yeah, but I was, I was sitting there drawing a picture and then I put, I would put the name on the back of it. Um, yeah. And then I would put, and then, you know, 106, um, the, in the name of it, where it was, what yeah. leg, what position we were right. on the back. We will get back to that. I will say my like, pictures. yeah, we're going to get to those pictures because they come into play big time at the end of this. But um, we do want to try to get into the finale as quickly as possible. Kayla passed us after getting it on the first try. She has young eyes yeah. and glasses. Um, Bless I, her heart. I got it on the next try after her. So we were not far behind. We weren't. Then Kayla and Raquel ran the wrong way to the lighthouse they went down the wrong path so when kim and i were leaving we saw them and we had a shot at catching them if we were fast, fast. um if we were ryan and dusty maybe you could have caught them on your own I, and again guys but we didn't care at this point we just want to get to the final three like, i mean i, I was we were trying yeah. well, i was running as fast as i could and so i again i am a 45 year old woman i run about a nine minute mile that was a long run too and it was i would say three quarters of a mile yeah it was probably. down it was downhill uphill on a dusty uneven road there and were rocks and it wasn't really clear how to get there but we did take the most direct path and i would say that was almost another lead change i'm like keeping track of all the lead changes there were so many lead changes yeah so we were we were right there but i was so happy to see them win the leg. I mean, honestly, I don't think enough women win this race. So I had said many times, if we don't win, I wanted a female team to win. I love Raquel and Kayla. I, of course, we want to win. My competitive spirit, I want to win. But I was so happy for them. But we were right there. But Penn's like, we can catch them. We can cut them off. I was like, and I was running as fast as I could. But I was like, dude, they're freaking fast. I'm not going to do this. So we get second, we're in the top three, and at that point, like, there was that sigh of relief, like, <sighs> We were relieved. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it, it was a, another beautiful stop, another great place to kind of enjoy, like, a zero humidity, 70 degrees, sunny day near the, wasn't there another, there was another body of water. They kept putting us it, by these beautiful cliffs so and pretty. bodies of waters. And so, you know, there's always that, there's A, relief, like, we're going to see the finish line. We're going to yeah. see the finish line. And then B, just taking a moment once you get to the finish line to take in the scenery. And I could see on my wife, I could see the stress oozing out of her face. When we, I could. I'm telling you, I could see it. Like, And I know and it, you oozed well, relief. I, well, you've been through uh, a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, and like so I say about. that was, for me, that was the hardest day on the race emotionally uh -huh. and i that was the hardest day like harder than than the uh rocks, rocks harder, harder than, than the, that's i think that's a surprising take coming yeah through. so i think it was harder than be, just because uh, everything we had to do it was fine i think it was like appropriately hard it was fine i think anything on this race when you're sleep deprived and you're panicking anything seems hard tying your shoes seems hard um did you have like a moment where you're thinking about what would have happened if you had that roadblock um, I try not to do that dance too many times yeah. because I think 
you know, you know, in the very beginning, there was a moment when we were out of balance on the roadblocks because I'd started my period, and he had to do two in a row. Um, but when you look back at the season, it ended up that we were fine. It, it ended up that every roadblock we had done, we were the right person for it. So I that think was that, definitely the case on this day. Like yeah. it, it's, I would say for the rowing as well, I could see myself just because I'm not messing that up because it would have taken me to make every guess to do a ha- to count and then do a half mile run. It would have taken me five to six minutes for every guess. And it probably would have taken me 10 times uh, to do that. Um, I think we had enough of a lead because poor Ryan and Dusty with that flipping doorknob, maybe we could have, we could have still been fine. Um, but I, I too would have taken it as a guessing game and mm-hmm. I just would have, um, I would have just, and you're a good runner. I mean, you would I'm, have kept a, I can go a distance. Like, yeah. I, I can keep going. Anyway, so it's time to fly back yes. to Los Angeles. You fly back to Los Angeles. You hear Phil as a flight attendant going for some dad jokes, which I can always give respect to. Know your audience. And dad you know jokes. what? I, I have to say this. Re- the season was very special, and we grew so close because of the way we had to travel. I think in those... Um, and the first, the first people we met in the airport were Raquel and Kayla, and mm-hmm. Sam and Connie were there too. But even that on that flight, we were sitting on different parts of the plane. Yeah, here we were next to each other for, on every flight. On every flight, and um, and also Phil was on our plane. Yeah, and the entire crew is on our plane. So we got a chance to know, get to know, like the producers, the photographers, the people who actually strategize and invent the games. Um, and also, I mean, we were we were flying back. With Dusty, Ryan, Kayla, and Raquel, which were the same people that we got onto a trolley car with on the way to the top of that mountain uh, in Switzerland at the beginning of the restart of the mm-hmm. race. And we sat like there and talked to each other like, wouldn't that be cool if this was the final three? Yeah, we, we, we made it into that bus to take up, you know. The, yeah, the first scene the of the first restart. scene of the restart. And we're like, yeah. we're like, wouldn't it be cool if we were all the top three? And here we uh, are. And here we are. So... And I have to say, in watching previous seasons, I know there's a, been a lot more animosity between teams, and I think part of that is created with yields and U-turns and things like that. So I, I understand how that happens, but I could not imagine going through that with people I didn't love and respect. That was one of our biggest fears when we went on the race. We like didn't want to get sucked into that kind of stuff. So by, once you get to the final three, you know that that's not going to happen because the final three – Everyone wants to knock everybody else out and everyone wants the other, everyone else to fail. Like that's, that's where it becomes a true race. There's yeah. no, there's never a U-turn in the final three, right? Right. There's no alliances in the final three. The pre-race mood for the, the final leg, mm-hmm. I felt very calm. And Lulu and Lala later in the day told me, cause they were up in the hotel watching us do our pre-interviews kind of like out in this area. And, um, before we were, we were taken to where we're starting and, Lulu and Lala said, like, we, she's like, you guys just seemed so calm. Like, they were 11 stories up, and they looked down, like, we should seem so calm. I'm like, you know, I felt really calm. And that was the first time I had felt calmness the entire time. Wow. And. I felt calm-ish. Um, the, like, the biggest issue was we were still on European time. So the day of the finale, we woke up at about 4, 4.30 a.m. Remember that, hon? Mm-hmm. And the race didn't start till noon. It, uh, I mean, we, we took out, we took off from the hotel, you know, not at 4 a.m., relatively early in the morning to kind of set up and get ready to go. But we had been awake for eight hours by the time the race started yeah. uh, that day. And I do believe that even though you were calm and you felt calm and I felt calm, that when they said go oh, on that final leg brain. with that final clue, that if I, no one took the time to think about the clue. We, we read the clue, but no one, none of us it, thought about that it, it, first I, clue. I could have just been reading, you know, the alphabet at that point because no, I yeah. read it out loud for, you hear me reading it out loud or you're reading it out you loud. You hear me say slow down. And then I was like, because like, <laughs> right, everybody started running. And that is where, uh, honestly, when we had these notes and these sort of rules for ourselves, it was like, slow down, read the clue. Don't do this. Slow down, read the clue. You rip open the envelope. You read that there are three locked clue boxes on the towers of the Westin in downtown L.A. So our job was to find a, cl- find a clue box and then spot the combination. Going up, up and, and down. down. And so that going up and down could have meant a ton of things. And everyone 
thought it meant going up and down the stairs. So we were, right? yeah. So we ripped. So you see me going up and down. So as we're running, so we had to make it to the 32nd floor. So we had to go down and then over a, across yeah. and then to get to the 32nd floor. So it was a little bit of a maze. And I think they show us running and we all tried to go in different directions yeah. because there's only one per tower. So the first one, and Ryan and Dusty are so fast. And so the first one we found, Ryan and Dusty were already, already there. there. Yeah. And, and I was like, oh, they already got it. So we turn around, have to go down, go all the way across the building. We thought Ryan and Dusty were done. We thought they we were thought, done. We thought they had the clue. And so point. because we walked out and yeah. we, I saw them looking out, but I was like, and so again, race brain, I should have... <laughs> I should have. Well, oh, both of us should. Have. Both of us should have. So here's a, a couple other things to mention about this. Um, these are not decorative areas, right? There's writing and weird scribbles on the walls. It's like it's like a service entrance to the hotel. It's not meant to be walked on by hotel guests. So there were all these little things we were trying to read into on the on the wall. But here's the other thing: when we started running back around, Dusty and Ryan, they were gone. We're like, oh, yeah, they're, they're out of here. If you look in the YouTube clips. They were they were so confused. They got to the clue box. They didn't see the clue going up and down. They were trying to enter, uh, you know, some sort of code from the race. Like, what's a four uh, number thing that happened from so, the race? They had, then they got in the elevator and they went down to the lobby. Well, we all had these race blinders. Of on. course, yeah. I will say that. So finally, we find. So we the first time I was like, let's just find a clue box. So we find a clue box and. And that you see, and after we were there for about 20 seconds when I was like, you know, oh, up and down elevator. So we spotted it. Um, You see us. So in, so I thought we got it first, but Raquel and Kayla on the show actually got it. We're probably the same time. We we both thought they got it first, but we didn't realize that we got it first until we got to the car. So that's why we thought we got out first. And there were three cars and we had the first car. We did get to the car first. We got to the car first. So, um, I another would, lead change. Another lead change. So we got directions before we left the hotel where they got a little tripped up because I think they got outside first. They went outside to ask for directions. And this is downtown L.A. At the time, there weren't a lot of people walking around for whatever reason. Uh, they said, so we actually got to the car first. So we thought we had a more significant lead. And then we are pulling up to, uh, and it was another route info to the square, which I should remember the name of. To see, and we pulled up. We saw the clues. We saw everything there. But then we had to find legal parking, which was down. We found a parking lot, which was down a little bit. Yeah, and the, we could have illegally parked anywhere. Anywhere. But I was like, <laughs> we're, let's not that. get a penalty yeah, on the final that. leg of the Amazing Race. You can't do it. So we're telling Kayla. We see. We are making our way there, and then we spot them. We're like, oh crap! Here they are. So we open our clue, um, and here's the challenge. One person had to put on this weird, like, Mexican wrestling mat- mask on, so completely blindfolded. You couldn't see anything. They had to do, like, a test to make sure he couldn't see anything. I uh, And then grab a little smashy stick. And there's all these rows of pinatas. They gave us three specific pinatas that was listed on a chalkboard that we had to find to smash open. The person had to grab the clue, and those three clues gave the direct or the address of our next location. Very quickly, the person who had the wrestling mask on could not see anything that was going on over there, did not know anything about the pictures. I would say we were 20 or 30 feet away from each other. I'm already not the best of hearing. Um, and then you put that wrestling the wrestling mask on, and it's even it was harder to hear. Oh. So Kim, who doesn't love to shout, she's the kind of person who she'll like she'll want me to do something, and she'd be like, "Hey, honey, can you go get the thing over there?" I'm not like, very like, loud. Oh, yeah, I'm not really loud. So and, and so so she, Kim had to raise her voice a bit. She did a great job of that. But then there was this mariachi band, very talented, that was messing with us. And so they would walk in between us. So the yeah. mariachi band was very. It's a mariachi band. They're very loud. Great. Beautiful music, but they would walk in between us. They would walk around us. So I'm screaming like, "Take a 45." So they do it to distract you, right? So you have race brain. So initially, all I, the things I'm thinking of all the things you had to worry about. All well, I had to do was smash. Well, so um, it was a find an all paper star, a mm-hmm. tiny donkey, and a taco. So the taco was pretty easy to find. Um, it was huge. It was huge. So we got that. The all paper star. They're all freaking paper. 
And I and I asked the production afterwards. They're like, well, one was shiny paper. And because online they're like, oh, it's clear that those are plastic. Those little shiny things are like birthday hats. They was like, that's paper. So I was like, they're all freaking paper. So eventually we get the the paper star. We did stir. I'm out of order a little bit. So it said You time. started looking for the donkey. It started looking for the donkey because there were about three brown mule donkey pinatas that were smaller they were smaller than the other traditional pinata donkeys so they were smaller so it's like oh that's the tiny donkey because it's a donkey and it was smaller than the other one smashy smashy we smash all of those so i'm like well maybe it's in one of the tiny donkeys so we smash all three of the brown smaller donkeys and i was like well crap that's not it and then I spot the star finally, or the taco, finally spot the star, the freaking tiny donkey. And you couldn't, you hear, hear me say, like, they're all freaking tiny donkeys because they were all, at that point, we smashed all the smaller donkeys because there were about four different sized donkeys. And I smashed all the smaller ones and I'm like, oh, they're all bleeping tiny donkeys. That tiny donkey, we were never going to find unless... So Penn's strategy was like, you hear him saying, I'm well, just going to smash everything. Well, but wasn't that the point where you were just trying to move around? And I was... You, so, yeah. Oh, and here was another rule. I couldn't leave this one specific area on... the. There was kind of this um, gazebo area, and I couldn't leave this area of the gazebo. So you, I was on my stomach. I walked to the edge of where I could go, and I'm looking. I, I, I had... Before he started smashing stuff, I was like, let me find, you know, let sure. me find first. So at, at this point, it's the third one. Raquel and Kayla had left. They, yeah, they made it look closer than I think it was. I think that it was 10 minutes, I think I had, I had was, I got one clue and they had three. They, it, yeah, maybe. It, yeah. It, it, and it was, I'm going to say it was more than 10 minutes. Probably, you're probably right. It was, it was, I think it was probably 15 minutes. Yeah. So they left. And I think at that point, and I'm surprised they didn't put it in the show. I'm like, sorry, babe. Second place in the Amazing Race is still really freaking good. I'm like, second place is really good. And I was already like, okay. I wasn't giving up. Yeah. I wasn't giving up, but I was like. I just wanted to smash. I was like, well, this is how we go down. And here we go. And so I was trying to stay calm. And so at that point, <laughs> he goes, can I just start smashing him? I was like, you know what? Just I'm, I'm still looking. He's smashing. He smashes enough that it exposes <laughs> and, and you see the tiny donkeys in between these huge ones. It was really, yeah, that I was, he had taken out an entire, so there was an entire string, but without that entire string of pinatas gone, right. I was never going to find the and tiny donkey. I think that you even talked to someone afterwards or a producer or someone who said, Oh yeah, you drew a tough lot on that particular one. Cause there were two very wide pinatas in between this small pinata and if you were standing you know off to the side of it you could see it spot. but if it's if it was a straight line from your face it was it was you really like a blind it. spot listen Raquel and Kayla figured it out very quickly I they did four pinatas I think, I think they knocked on four and we locked, knocked on probably 24 but without <laughs> him knocking them all down I was never gonna see that tiny one so our strategy of just knocking the crap out of them actually worked yeah. it was a lot of work. and I want to give you some credit Really quickly, I know that you were like so. Kim, I was beating myself up. Kim the gets whole time. Kim gets frustrated, and so do I. When you don't like, when you get passed by someone, and they did it again. They passed us on another one. Raquel and Kayla keep passing us. I don't like this theme. It's the third time in the finale episode that they've passed us on a challenge, mm -hmm. right? So this is three, um, and we hate it when it happens once. But so Kim had so much to deal with. She had cryptic clues, which I didn't have. All I had to do was smash, and she had to instruct. Her blind, drunken, insane, Hulk smash, rage filled husband to all of these different places. And I thought you were very good, Kim, at instructing me where to go just to get started. I thought you were like that part of it, we were really, really good at. Um, and and you kept your cool once we figured it out and you, you you gave very clear instructions. You raised your voice. Let's move on. We get the clues. We It was um, the address to this um, you know sound design studio uh, in Hollywood. Um, we stopped, got good directions. We didn't get lost. Part of my note-taking process is I always took notes on how long it took us at challenges. Mm -hmm. And I would compare them with other people because I wanted to know – did the start times really matter? Did starting 15 minutes ahead, you know, I think some of the people who started behind us were like, well, it's impossible to catch up if we start 15 minutes behind. But I'd be like, well, we actually did that challenge faster or you did it fast. Like, mm -hmm. So I was doing mental accounting. We actually did pretty well at challenges, 
But the last two days, we were really we were struggling. So we well, get, we just we ran into things that didn't line up to our our vision. either our either our skills or our fortune. So I here's what I think. I think that that pinata was our bad cab. And those of you who watch the race know what that means. There's always um, there's always a bad cab that'll knock somebody out of a really important leg yeah. in the race. Like they just get in a taxi and the taxi guy either runs out of gas or he gets a flat tire. Or he doesn't know where he's going. And so there were no cabs in this race. Our bad cab was a pinata that was lined up in an almost impossible situation to see. And I, um, so I, I could have done it wrong. I it totally. So that's my bad. I'll take that. I screwed up. So we get there and I have to say my mood was, Hey, I want to fight for this. I hope there's a big, huge ta- a memory task at the end. I was counting on a big memory task, yeah. so I was like, "Let's just get through this as soon as possible." But enjoy. Let's enjoy yeah. ourselves. If this is this is our last day ever on the Amazing Race, let's yeah. enjoy ourselves. This was a great challenge for us for several reasons. It was a for, foley challenge. Yeah, it was a foley challenge. For one of the reasons, it was a great challenge is uh, you're, you're looking at all of these past scenes, iconic scenes from the Amazing Race, and you're on a sound stage and you're creating the sound effects with like. A a soggy sponge or a bunch of hay or, you know, a, 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 a two inflatable balloons that you smash together. And we knew all of these scenes. We'd seen them so many times. There was the, the Oktoberfest one with the beers and the pies. There was the ox that got broken, which was like a super famous scene. There was um, the inflatable uh, wrestling, running of the, bulls. R- yeah, running of the bulls challenge. And then of course there was the watermelon shot, which I've watched for my own obsessive reasons, a hundred times because I always wanted to ask like someone at the amazing race, if they ever entertained the thought of what would happen if that watermelon didn't break. Oh, I know. Well, that's okay. Um, okay. But it did break. And thank goodness, because it just led to like a little bit of a bruise and a broken nose. But, but we knew the timing of all these things. We knew the timing of all these things just because we were, you know, obsessed about that. We had never done fully before. I think you hear Penn saying like he, you know, he does editing. He has a very musical background. So he actually really excelled at this. I do a lot of lip syncing. He does a lot of lip syncing. <laughs> but I, I'm fascinated by it as a production. I would say because I was aware of it, of course that was helpful. But it doesn't, once you're in it and you're in race brain, um, it that I don't know if that was necessarily an advantage for us, but we asked him to do one. And I was like, let's just try it just to see what we don't know. He started talking, which is so funny. You can't talk. And then, what do you mean you don't want to hear in the movie? Hey, honey, I'm coming over here. Like in the middle. <laughs> so you know he, um, he, you know, we both missed a sound. Like there was, you have to crinkle the gloves, which you know I didn't see everybody do the glove crinkle. Anyway, I think there were no, no. That was I noticed that, and we watched it. I don't think Raquel and Kayla did the glove crinkle, which. I know they weren't going to like, they told us that was a fail and we didn't do the glove. Who knows? Who how knows? This whole thing works. Who knows? Anyway, cause I was watching, I'm like, did everybody figure that out? Um, so it took us six tries. I think it took them that eight or right. nine. Right. And we also, I mean, we made up time not only cause it was six tries, but we went very shortly in between each one. We were of the belief that we had all the information in our head of what we needed. Like we didn't need to get too many demonstrations. We just needed to get it right. And so the only way to get it right was practice, just practice, keep doing practice, it. We just practice. We kept rolling through it. So you see us, we get out at the same time and we see Raquel and Kayla. And I was like, holy crap, we're still in this. Um, and you see us asking directions. So they're leaving. They yeah. already got directions. And then you see us ask for directions from the same guy. His phone died. So when this, we got this question on Twitter. We're, just to be clear, he like he told us where to go. Um, we had directions on the clue. So he, he told us the exact same thing that they told Raquel and Kayla, but they did have a map to look at on how to get there. So we wanted for, not only for him to tell us, but to look at the map as well. So we walked up to look at the map. And as we did it, like Raquel, and Kayla, yeah, Raquel and Kayla are pulling out the guy's phone dies. We're not super confident in, in what he's telling yeah, us. Cause he's like, just yeah. go the one ten to this, this. And I'm like, I don't know how, and on the bottom of the clue, it even said, like, take the 110 to this exit or whatever. But I was like, I don't know how to get to the 110. I don't, it was the 110. I don't even it know. was the 110. And I, like, I don't know how to get there. And just follow, telling a guy on this leg of the race for him to just say, take left, you know, take left and just you'll follow the signs. I'm like, I need to know how far we're going. So we chose, we're like, let's take the extra four minutes and get good directions. So we ran across the street and we got extra directions, which is why you see us show up to the final right. thing. Like seven well, or eight minutes no, later. We were about 10 minutes later, according to Raquel and Kaylee. You never know how this works, but half of it 
was stopping and asking for directions. Five or six minutes there. The other half of it, and we'll just say everyone hit traffic, and I think we all had the same slowdown there. It was like an hour sitting in traffic. Imagine being this close to a million dollars, and everything just stops Mm -hmm. on the road. And, you know, you're looking around like, is there a detour? I mean, I wish I had my ways and it could show me kind of which way to go. And then when we got there, um, they, there was like a Northwest Southwest entrance, whatever it was. And I think if we had just gone straight, we would have gotten there in maybe a minute, but instead we drove all the way around. It wasn't a terrible detour, but I bet it was five minutes added on to find the parking. So five minutes of asking for directions and then five minutes plus five minutes, finding parking that wasn't in the right spot equals 10 minutes behind. And what you will see was a pretty potentially pretty quick challenge that could have been our race so the yeah. final memory challenge we were on a tennis court and they had partitions up we knew Raquel and Kayla were there because we can hear faults um, but we couldn't see them and there are little clues on the wall like you, t- you you took this the rest of the way you ate this um, and on the surface you look at that you're like oh that seems pretty easy Here's where it got complicated. For every answer, like he greeted you at the pit stop or whatever, there would be four things that were slightly off. So the so, slightly, so like the, very slightly. So the Dolmades was something like you made sixty of these. Was I think that or there were or it just said sixty or you made sixty of these. The issue was there were about four pictures of her and the plate was slightly off. So the domates would be this direction as opposed to line up this way. So they had them stacked. So if you just threw it up in a panic, you, would, you wouldn't realize that they were lined up this way. You hear me saying, like, we got this. Here's why. This is, I'm, this, I'm, this is the part I'm most excited about of any of the podcasts that we have done because we are premiering these. I had a big notebook and... You know, we if you're watching this race, you watch this race, you know that there's traditionally, I think the best finales have a great memory, you know, a task at the end. Um, they, we were kind of looking for what it was. We thought maybe there'd be numbers because we had to go up 8,000 feet. We had to make 60 of these. But at the pit stop, and it wasn't even necessarily aired. I think there were some extra clips. And, it, and he didn't make a big deal about it. But my friend Phil would be like, oh, isn't this a beautiful view? Take a look at that view. And so I was like, he wants us to look at something, but he also probably wants us to look away from something. So I was like, at, and when we were in Lugano is when I was like, he's asking us to look somewhere. So I'm like, it's going to be the images. So I went back through our race and I went through all my notes and I started drawing like this. In, in, I'm a terrible artist. That's I, you keep saying but, it's but, bad, but the, the bowler it's not. Has, it's not a bad drawing. No, and I, I need just kind of, and then I would okay. write notes on the back of it, and eventually, as we got closer to this leg, we ripped them out, and in our hotel room because there's nothing to do, I would place them or he would place them in out of order, and we would try to line them up in order. Um, this was, you know, the, these were the little goat medallions that were on. It was the on the guys. Uh, in, in, um, in St. Um, St. Gallen, Al yeah. these, his, his little medallions had goats on them. This was, you know, the little hat he wore. <laughs> this was the view from the, in Lugano, there was like a fountain. I was like, okay, if we spot a fountain, that's it. Um, let no, me, we all know what that is. Oh my God. That's bungee <laughs> I feel jumping. Like you should show a picture of the stick figure of you. Uh, this is, um, oh, you know, just silly things. So this is the greeter in uh that in corsica i was like he was wearing a hat he it was like that so again um i drew the towers i have to find the napoleon one sorry guys oh this <laughs> like down to the hat i'm like this is what napoleon's hat looked like it had two little things so we would sit there and study pictures mm-hmm. we were really really confident going in i was like we got i i was so confident our fur the, but the only thing the only thing I didn't know was that damn coin. It was a low point we, in my life. Yeah, we had a couple. We had a couple of things that we weren't a hundred percent sure on. the The truck that they put that got yes. us up uh, on Corsica was not exactly the same as the, like the one that we took, but it was the same color, and we figured that was what they were looking for. It said takes you the mm-hmm. rest of the way there. We had a blue, like topless jeep, and they didn't. The only blue jeep they had in there was a traditional jeep. So that's why we got, like, that was a little, we were a little hung up on that. There's maybe 80, 90 pages here. And some of them have numbers and some of them have pictures. Um, I thought that they were actually very good depictions. Like, I don't need a Van Gogh, but she really focused on, 
what she thought were the important accents. And that's really all that matters. Like that was the hat that she knew that the guy in the phone booth was wearing. And I mean, specifically for Napoleon, they had four different hats, right? Mm -hmm. And just all of these things, they were detailed in just the right place. They didn't have to be perfect, but the way that your brain was working, you remembered certain things and it was freaky how much they lined up. Like when we looked at the guy at the pit stop that greeted us, there was some details, uh, whether it was a hat or maybe the lining on his shirt, can't remember what it was, that we looked at and I'm like, holy crap, Kim drew that on one of these pieces yeah, of paper. I think, and so, I, yeah, so I think that, and our first guess was one off because the only thing I didn't look at, I got the coin and the first, I, I turned the coin over when I got the rock and I immediately showed it to Dusty and Arun. Right. And then I was like, get me the F out of here. So I didn't study that. Well, isn't it funny that nobody got the coin right? If you, if you look at all like Dusty yeah. and you look at you and you look at uh, um, Raquel, everyone struggled with the coin. That was the great equalizer when it came down to this race. But then, so here's what I was doing while you were doing this. Kim had done everything she could and more to prepare us and to give us a crazy amount of confidence for the majority of these. But as I've been saying since the first podcast, the amazing race is the world's biggest math problem. Mm -hmm. You saw the way that the Beekman boys won, right? They turned that final challenge into a math problem. We, we did that. So what we did was we took our 100% and we put them up there, right? Mm -hmm. The things that we were hundred percent sure about, we were a hundred percent sure about all but three, and here's why. The boat, we knew kind of what it looked like, but you weren't 100% sure what the name was because it was a Portuguese spelling. Of so it. I knew it was a red and blue boat because I, right. I have a drawing of a red and blue boat, but I'm like, maybe they're looking for the name. And yeah. so that is why. So we put the boat up right the uh -huh. first time, but I was like, oh, but maybe they're looking for the name and not the color right. of the boat. But we were down to two boats. Right. So we were 50-50 on that boat. So let's we're, we're doing permutations here, right? This is going to be fun. Um, we were down, to, we were down to 50% permutations on the truck. They weren't going to tell us which one was right. One of them looked more like it, and one of them was the right color. So we, we had to do both of those. So we did. We went through all of the permutations of those while also flipping out the coin, and the coin was down to four, mm -hmm. right? So, so without knowing what was right, we, we basically stuck with, for a few minutes, the, the boat that we were like 60% sure about and the truck we were 70% sure about and we let it ride with those and then we scaled through all four coins. Yeah. And that's how we did it. And I was, and it was one of those things where there was a um, season 31, the season finale and Christine Jen, like they, I was pulling for them as a female team and she was stuck on this puzzle task and I heard her say at one time that she had it really closely in the beginning, but the clue said like it had to fit in perfectly. And there was one of the wings didn't fit in the, the, the way they accepted the answer. The wing fit in kind of wonky. I, I'm really unsure about that, but she, so that Jeep was throwing me off because ours was blue and they didn't mm -hmm. have a blue Jeep that looked like that in the final clue. And so that's what I'm like, well, if that's right, then this boat could, be, that's why I was so sure of everything going in. And on the surface, it looks like an easy memory challenge, but as you saw with Raquel and Kayla, the more you start messing with it, the worse it gets. So I have to say, we got, and we have to watch it back. I think it took us like six or seven faults. Uh, who knows? It could have been 15 because it was so quick. You could always yeah. say, check, fault, check, fault, check, fault. I mean, if, if you look through the total number of permutations for 11 of those things with, with three or four possibilities for each one, the possibilities are in the millions, maybe even in the billions. So you've got to have some knowledge to figure it out. Um, um, but and, yeah. we could have done as many as we wanted. Um, and then I, we got it when it comes down to it. I think they told us at the end it was like seven minutes or something like that. It was fast. Like it, it was fast. It, it, that, was, that was the longest seven minutes of my life. Because um, we knew this is it. I'm like, I, yeah. we, we are, they had us, they were saying a clue like park your car, take your bag. So I'm like, the finish line is here. Yeah. The finish line is here and we're running to it. Um, and I was a little sad as a super fan. We didn't get the go, go, go clue because there's always like a, it's, it's always like a go, go, go. So I wanted like the go, go, go. I, like, see, I, I hear you, but I like, I love the way they did it. First of all, I love tennis. It's like, it's my favorite sport. I'm wearing a pickleball shirt right now, which tennis. is almost tennis. Um, tennis adjacent. And, uh, but like the, just you go from getting the challenge right to, to the finish line. It's so, like right there. Wasn't that cool? She says, 
game, set, match, run through the tunnel. And all of a sudden, both of our voices got really high. Yeah. So I want you guys to Google Howard Dean, who was a politician uh, for those kids out there who don't remember it, who was a front runner for the Democratic nomination. And he gave a speech. And for some reason, his Q rating like dropped and his ratings dropped after a very shrill. Yeah. yeah! And that was me. I was Our, Howard Dean coming through you, the and tunnel. So we grab our bags and you hear me say like did we just win the amazing yep. race i, I think and i was like, I remember you saying that. and i was looking at him i'm like we're about to win the amazing race and it's something like as a fan of the show you imagine what that feels like and then to know it's about to happen is crazy and then you see people like this and I'm like, oh, they weren't happy. But then you, that, that was, they shot it before. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to go back because we actually said at the beginning of the Portugal, we've been joking about this. Like, we don't ever want to be the people clapping because they never look, ha- they're always like, oh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. But like, you're like, oh, they're dying inside. They want to win this thing. And they showed uh, Michael and Mo and Rune and Natalia, and it was the same thing. It was like this. But like, we saw them. No, and then you see when you when we're, we're running were, up, they were very well, happy. And here's the, like, we've us. got this video. So, so take a look. We're just going to do a little bit of editing. I want you to see Michael and Mo and Rune and Natalia. They just look like someone's asking them to smile right now. But then look at the overhead shot when we jump on the mat. And everyone's like jumping up and down and really excited. Like they were legitimately pumped for us. And that got me emotional, like to see those guys again. I know. And I just remember looking at him like, did we just do this? And then you hear Phil say those words like, you're the official winners of the Amazing Race. And I was waiting, honestly, because that damn truck clue because yeah. i was like well that i don't think we did it right because that's not the i so i was like i'm waiting for you to tell me i did it wrong like are you sure i like that's why i was like are you sure we're did, we right? win this? did we actually win this i was waiting for them to find something that we did wrong and say like no you actually didn't win this um and so we were so happy at, but but then instantly i got very sad because I know that I wanted to win this. I wanted to win this for my family and as a fan. But I also, as a fan, I knew sitting on my couch, like I would want the girls to win. And I know that they were, so, they were literally right there. And so I, and I had grown to love them so much. I wanted to win, but I didn't want them to lose. And so it was hard for me to process that in the moment of like, yes, I'm very happy, but I'm also like really heartbroken for, and Dusty and Ryan too. Like they yeah. had been, they'd been through so much too. Don't you think it's, it's almost easier or was easier in that moment to finish a more like, I don't want to say a distant third, but to finish third than to finish second. Like, like you could, you could almost tell the difference between those two teams and like finishing seconds really, really hard, especially if you were as close as Raquel and Kayla mm. were and Dusty and Ryan, you know, you saw Dusty through the He's back. like through his backpack. Dusty threw, I've never seen anyone throw a backpack that far. He could be an Olympic backpack thrower. Um, I mean, he's always been very positive and energetic, but I, I'm with you. Like I thought a little bit about that. It, the whole thing was so hard to process, but we, we were able to enjoy that moment on the mat with all of these people who we'd made like lifelong friends with. We were able to like, kind of bring it in and shake hands not only with the cast but also all of the members of production who had gotten us like through this whole thing and then and then we really had to like you and I had a moment in the airport where we were just kind of like hey we won this it's great and then we kind of have to go into hiding Mm -hmm. and not show any of your emotion or any of your excitement for several months until right now I was probably six o'clock by the time five six o'clock by the time everything was everybody's there wrapped up and um and they gave us the option to stay the night and fly out first thing in the morning or take the red eye and i kind of wish we'd stay the night to like go celebrate with everybody but i was so desperate to see my kids we we went we we went straight from the finish line to the airport and uh in 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 the same clothes and we took the red eye and we got home by 6 a.m. and we took our kids to school because they both had tests that day. I was going to keep them home from school, but they both had tests that day. Yeah. And then, but we were sitting in the airport, like literally from the finish line, they put us in a van, take us to the airport. We're in the same clothes. Yeah. And, and we're in the airport bar. Um, first of all, you know, just being able to navigate by yourself through an airport for after 24 days of not. Um, and we got a glass of wine. I'm like, we just can't say anything i know it was the weirdest glass weirdest of wine thing. was really good by oh the my way. gosh it went down real good um <laughs> and i think that um I, there's we're gonna i 
we're going to keep this version of the podcast going for a little bit because we want to talk to Raquel and Kayla and Dusty and Ryan and even we haven't talked to Lulu and Lala yet. Maybe like Phil, the producers, like we'd love to, you know, do some more of this content. Um, we've been like, it's very flattering that people want to interview us and everybody's asking like, what are you going to do with a million dollars? Um, so a million dollars is life changing. Uh, Uncle Sam gets the biggest chunk of it. <laughs> We are, you heard us say, we're going to save our kids college. And that's where it's like a generational change because, because they can go to school without debt. They can go to school without debt. Yeah. And, um, my, I went to a state school and state school. So, um, but I had two jobs in college and my parents helped me with what they could. Um, but it was, it was a struggle to, to go through college like that. And the fact that they're going to have a choice because I didn't have a choice of where I could go based on money. The fact that they're going to have a choice of where they could go um, is it's that's a that's going to affect our family for generations. So that is not lost on me. Plus, we do have plans to share um, a, about thirty percent of this of, of what we take of thirty percent of this we have decided to share, and so we um, are going to talk about that so we our life isn't going to look any different um we're not buying a new car we're going to get my car fixed it has a big dent in the door um I ba- get- no i backed into uh so if i mean you you've had some anxiety issues like this last week just trying to like i mean this is a secret that you have to keep in and it's a wonderful secret you know right but just the 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 kind of the time building up to it and the number of people who are asking you and like, I'm not the kind of person who likes to lie to people or keep secrets. Um, this has been a lot for me and I like my ADHD has really reared its ugly head the last couple of weeks. And it's been, this has been tough for me. I left a suitcase at the airport at an airport, just at an airport. And then I flew to another state. I got, yeah, I got off of the plane and I like, I flew the entire time, got off the plane was looking for my stuff and I was like, Oh, it never got on the plane on the way out. And then I backed into Kim's car in the driveway. It was right next to me at about one tenth of a mile an hour and, uh, left a dent in it. So this is like, I'm just going to say like, this part has been tough for me. I like that moment in LA. I'm so glad that we could share it. And it was so great when it happened, but the real relief, I, we finally, our kids got to find out. And if you haven't seen the video already, let's put it back up right now. Um, we were uh, at this nightclub watching it on a very large screen and this is our kids finding out and just quick spoiler alert, Kim and I had to go back to our room to watch the end of the race because we weren't looking at the camera. We just wanted to see what our kids did. So if you, if you look at this video, um, we were just looking at them and their reaction was priceless. We'll have it forever. And, uh, we're, we're just so happy that we could share that with them. I just can't tell you enough what it meant for these last two days to be here to be with these people that I consider lifelong friends. And like, when would I ever meet radio DJs from New York? Like when would I ever meet yeah. a principal from New Jersey? A guy who went to prison. For Why, how years. would I, how would my circle of my yeah. sphere of life ever intersect with somebody like a room, a room who, <laughs> who runs a Dunkin' Donuts in, in, in Detroit in mile. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that, um, I mean, I'm going to try not to get emotional. These people, they threw us together and we started a pandemic together and it took two years of our lives to do this. I'm, I'm thrilled and honored at the result, but it was an absolute privilege to be a part of this. And um, I just, I feel very honored to be a part of this community, yeah. this amazing race family. And I can't say enough about the producers behind the scenes and what they did. It is the Herculean effort to put on a race during a pandemic I wish they had would allow a behind the scenes documentary because for a lot of the ways it made it really hard to be a racer this season, there was a lot of things that made it a lot harder than our first three legs. Um, but I think producing it, I couldn't even imagine. So there were some funny tweets. Should we share some of those? Sure. Our friend Amory found these for us. Someone says, I still think their YouTube videos are kind of disturbing, but they definitely deserved <laughs> it. Thank you. Um, that's thank you. Gregory Allen said, we quote, we love mom and dad. So it was, that was Raquel. Cause they were like, we should have told them to not give them directions. And they're like, but they, you could see they battled. Like they still wanted us to do well. They're like, Oh, we love mom and dad. Like they called us mom and dad. Everyone did. Um, but, I mean, we were, we were kind of the older couple. Um, Somebody said, oof, how come the team I went to win the Amazing Race never does? Penn and his wife are so insufferable. That was, but then somebody says, 
quote, Penn and his wife tells me everything I need to know about you. Yeah, like, <laughs> learn my name before you insult me. Ari says, Kim and Penn remind me of Phil and Claire Dunphy. Oh. That is a compliment, and it's so, so true. that is a huge compliment. I Like, for, for both, right? And it's funny, we watched that show when it first came out, and we looked at each other, and we're like, are we a little bit like these people yeah. in our dynamic. I don't, I don't know that we were as successful or as like impressive as they were uh, or as funny as they were, but that we definitely have a similar dynamic. Yeah. Before we stop, I, 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 I just want to say like you were, you were the best partner anybody could ask for. You were the best partner. I, I loved being with you. I know you were just mentioning all these people on the race that you got to connect with and they're great, right? But they are. But like the connection that I was able to have with you when we threw away our cell phones, like I'm sitting here thinking about, the, by the way, but I'm sitting here thinking about the fact that it's over and we crossed the finish line and I just started like pit sweating like a mother. So that's why I've been like, look at this. This is me. Why? This just, because like I... The like taking me back into those like last bits of the race. And I, I get nervous every time I think about that final challenge. But you were so like, other than being a great partner and just like in the moments in between the race, like us being able to connect and not care about anything, but having each other's back was such a gift in our, in our relationship that we may never have again until we get our kids off to college um, and can, can like reconnect with each other. This was like such a little oasis where we were able to have that moment. And then as a teammate, just all that you did to prepare us for that last moment. Um, I mean, I was talking about how the race, and I still believe the race is a math problem, but you got our probabilities down to such a limited amount because of all the preparation you did with drawing those things. And every night, I know you said that you do this to help kind of soothe your anxiety. You, mm -hmm. you write things down. But I also think that you, you studied so hard for the race and you knew to look for these little things for the final challenge. When you said, oh, I, I noticed that Phil is looking around at things and that, that made you think it was a visual challenge. Like that was all from your studying and, and commitment that you gave to this race. So as a partner, I could just kind of be myself because you took care of literally everything else. You're, I think so, you're very kind and generous, but there was literally, there was not another person that I could have done this race with. I am fascinated by the parent child dynamic, even as a friend to, there's nobody that you quite literally had to talk me off of a ledge at the beginning of this. I mean, I was never going to hurt myself. You guys, it was all about getting air. Like I needed more air in, um, so I am just so thankful I had you. You're the best partner. Um, I really was. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, no, I, like, I, there were times that I wasn't. I think, so I, I want to talk to other people who have, who have been to where we've been, whether it's final three or made it to the finish line. And I want to ask them, like, no one ever was perfect on, I, this, I, I, on this race. Yeah. But what you could be was a perfect team. You could be perfect to each other if you tried really hard you could really put that other person first and have their back every single step of the way and i think that the last three on our race were all pretty darn close to being perfect for each other mm -hmm. but i think we may have been the most perfect for each other when it came to like the finish line it's it's a relationship show it's not a it's not a race it's a relationship show mm -hmm. um what if they mixed Love is Blind? I mean, they've done blind date season. You want to mix something? Oh, we want, we want to play this game. Okay. No, no, we Let's, need, we need, we need to, we need to get this edited and posted. Oh um, God. Yeah. What so is we yeah, slept in. We slept in. We don't normally sleep in. So, um, we love you. Thank you so much for following our journey. I'm sure you have a lot of questions uh, or maybe you don't, maybe you're sick of us talking about it, but, uh, thank you. We're yeah. so flattered with all your messages and I, like, I haven't even called people my family back yet. So please, um, I'm I trying know. to go through our messages. Um, our phones kind of melted. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. And as she said, this may not be the last of these. We're hoping it's not. We may um, stretch this out a few more weeks just to answer questions and bring on some other like unique people who are part of the experience. And it, we get asked this all the time. Would you do it again if they did a winter season? You know, I would go back on the Amazing Race as a producer. <laughs> My anxiety cannot take being a racer again. <laughs> I, oh, God. You're so good at it, though. I would go back for anything. I would go back to produce. I would love to edit. I, I want to do my own edit cut of Scotland because oh, yeah. Scotland was, they didn't, they, they didn't have time, right? Because yeah. of all, all that they had to tell about COVID. I would love to be a part of the post-production of the race. You'd love to be a part of the production. Um, I would, I would do this again with you uh, if I knew that we could be guaranteed total mental health and we can't, can't we can't that. guarantee that. So. Um, anyway, thank you guys. Bye. Love you, bye.